there and welcome. So today I thought I'd try and discuss something that's come up due to me making a comment on a YouTube video. So I was watching this video about um, how to negotiate bends. Running wide is a big, big thing these days. It was about that. So I did post on there um, about always being able to stop in the distance you can see to be clear on your side of the road because that's the advice we're given in roadcraft and that's the advice that you will always get when you go on a training course because if you can't you're putting yourself at risk of crashing into something you can't see so it stands to reason now this guy replied to me and said that it tickled him when people say that and he went on to say how he belonged to an advanced motoring group and how he'd spoken to many people in that group and basically you can't follow that rule and it was interesting because it got me to thinking and I recall back in the day as well you know on driving courses that I've and riding courses that I've done in the past and it does make you question could I really stop in the distance I could see to be clear and in all fairness generally speaking it's going to apply mainly to left hand bends isn't it now one of his arguments was for some bends I would need to slow down so significantly to be able to stop in the distance I can see to be clear I would have to inconvenience the traffic behind me and they would be slowed down so much that they could cause you a problem and I see his reasoning I see exactly what he's what he's saying there and he also went on to say how many riders could stop a motorcycle with emergency braking on a curve taking into account temperature of the road temperature of the tires how well do you know your bike condition of the road and let's be honest those factors that you have to consider are vast if you read the highway code you're told what the stopping distances are well how accurate are those stopping distances rumor has it they were done in an old car an old Austin 1100 or something um, back in the 60s on thin cross ply tyres and what were the road conditions like what is the true stopping distance of any vehicle would you know it's going to vary massively because unless you know the coefficient friction of the road and the tyres it's very very difficult to tell exactly what a stopping distance is how many of us if you were told your stopping distance was 160 meters how many could go out and pace or judge exactly 160 meters up the road I doubt many of us could this is where experience comes in because in all fairness your stopping distance is probably going to be a guesstimate now I can think of a couple of occasions over the years and they both involve left-hand bends one of which when I was a lot younger and wasn't following that rule I had a very lucky escape because I came around a left hand bend and this was in a car at a fair rate of knots being enthusiastic and as I came around the blind bend there was a car parked stupidly it was a dangerous position but doesn't matter it, they hadn't but it could have broken down um, they're actually just taking the view now as I came around that corner all I could do was go on the other side of the road and avoid it Fortunately, no one was coming, so it wasn't a drama. The reality is, had someone been coming the other way, I would have had a choice. Smash into the back of that car, or hit another vehicle head-on. That would have been it. And I can think of another situation. Unfortunately, I got an early view over the trees, because the vehicle was big. It was a 44-ton Arctic. That was broken down just around the corner on a left-hand bend. And so I was able to, to deal with that so when you look at the practicality and the reasoning behind always be able to stop in the distance safely that you can see to be clear on your side of the road there's a lot of sense in it it makes perfect sense the moment you step beyond it you are quite frankly gambling a little bit aren't you it stands to reason so to be tickled by the rule when you're an allegedly an advanced rider You've got to start thinking about things, because trust me, if you ride into the back of a station obstruction at however many miles an hour, you won't be tickled. That will not be the sensation that you experience. So let's go and have a look at some roads now, and let's realistically work out, can I stop in the distance safely I can see to be clear? And if it's safe and there's no traffic around, we'll even try and experiment and see if we actually can stop. 
So when it comes to single track roads such as this, I am absolutely going to follow that rule to the best of my ability. And in fact, I'm going to extend it further. What if someone comes around the bend now? So the limit point's moving away all the time. Can I stop? Yeah, absolutely right I can. Do I consider my speed in these circumstances to be unreasonable? No, I don't. It's like here, got a bit of a junction. Can I stop if I need to? Yeah. Absolutely right. So we've got a blind left-hander coming up here. We're in a 30 limit. I'm not going to try and go around it at 30. I'm going to assess it. See how quickly that limit point moves. Now, by anticipating the problem, throttling off, covering the brake, if I need to stop, yeah, I can stop. So at low speeds, it's probably a given yeah, we can stop. The issue is going to come when we start negotiating national speed limit roads. Now, yet again, even a single track national speed limit road, I really cannot see an issue with that rule at all. But I do get that once we move up to a single carriageway road, one lane in each direction, national speed limit, are we making an assumption that around that bend it will be clear because we want to carry a bit more speed for progress. Let's see how we get on. So I spoke earlier about a left-hand bend on a brow that I went charging around in a car many years ago only to find someone had literally parked around the corner and I couldn't have stopped in the distance I could see to be clear and I had to use the other side of the road and if there had been a car coming towards me there would have been a problem. I'm going to revisit that road today and I'm not going to talk through it, I'm just going to ride the bike at a speed that I think appropriate, bearing in mind the knowledge that I have now. And I just want to see whether someone for park around there today, could I stop in the distance I could see to be clear. So I'm not going to overthink it. And we can just see the brown now over the, the trees there. So I'm just going to ride the bike. There's no one behind me, so if I need to stop, I wonder if I could. Yeah, and that was that was the bend. I'm not going to come to a full stop on a main road on a brow like that. I think my natural instinct to drive, travel, ride at a speed that I was comfortable with has changed since I was younger. I think you realise you're mortal. So I'd have been a bit slower there than I would when I was in my twenties. Now. Had there been a vehicle parked around that bend, could I have come to a complete stop before connecting with it? Still think it's pretty borderline. Probably. Had it been raining, would I have gone slightly slower? Yeah, probably would have done. So yet again, we're right on the border. So we've got a finger post here. Now I'm doing 54 and a 60. I'm always going to slow down a little bit for a junction. Can I stop prior to that sign if I need to? Yep. Okay. That's fine. Let's try another one. Right, so we've got a brow of a hill. Can I stop in the distance I can see to be clear by that bush? Yep, I can. So far, what about this? Can't see around the corner. Well, if I had to brake suddenly. Ooh. Yep, could do it. this junction is another classic look we've got a junction on a blind right hander here can I stop in the distance I can see to be clear no one behind me I'm reducing the speed there we go look could I stop yeah bloody right I could it's planning at the end of the day it's planning I mean I'm not a slow rider I'm not the fastest but self-preservation for me tends to say don't go bowling round blind corners. I mean, could I stop if I need... Look, that's, see, that's just opening up all the time. Could I stop? Let's see if I can stop by that corner. Break, 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 break. Yeah, I can stop. So whilst you probably won't see any reference points in the video, I created a reference point in my mind. Can I stop? Yeah, I can. I know this is really unscientific, 
you know we have got lovely road conditions today i've got a bike that's got a six axis imu on it it's going to do a lot of working out for me but what i can tell you is that not once have any of the safety aids on this bike kicked in to tell me that i've got it wrong so it's like here i've got a van behind me i'm going to slow down just that little extra and show my brake lights if i need to stop I need to stop. I can't be dictated by the vehicle behind me into the speed that I enter a hazard. That has to be my choice. I've got to consider the vehicles behind me, of course. I can't completely ignore them. So if you're anticipating and regulating your speed early enough, there shouldn't be many reasons why that vehicle behind doesn't get enough early warning and ends up driving up your rear end and causing you a problem. If you're steaming it towards a corner and then go on the brakes hard, yeah, of course you can expect someone to be right up your rear end. That's pretty obvious. So when we think about the, the rule, always travel at a speed so you can stop safely in the distance you can see to be clear, is it a rule or is it guidance? Because an old saying was, Rules are for the blind obedience of fools and for the guidance of wise men. Well, yeah, there's a lot of truth in that as well. As an instructor, to say to any motorcyclist or car driver, well, you can go around that bend faster and it will be a bit of a gamble if you can't stop, but don't worry about it, take your chances. What, what message would be sending out there on a safety perspective? can't use that rule and say, except for the days where you fancy taking your chances of hitting someone part round the corner and killing yourself. That'd be a bit of a daft bit of gu a guidance to give, wouldn't it? It's like now, you know, how fast can I get this bike round the corner? Well, I can get that bike round there pretty quick, but I'm not going to go pretty quick because I can't see and I can't stop. So the speed I'm at, I, I can stop in the distance, so I can see to be clear. It's like here, I could come whizzing down here. To my mind, it would be foolish to do so. It's like there, I can see across that bend. So I'm going a little bit quicker. I've got gravel. There's always other considerations, now like this one here. So this bend's tightening up. Can I stop if I need to in that shaded area? Yeah. Yeah. Just because you can physically go around a bend at a certain speed doesn't mean you should. I think there's a reason some people have been riding 20, 30, 40, 50 years without incident and there's a reason that others haven't achieved that record. Now, I know anything can go wrong and we can all get things wrong at any time, but I do believe that when it comes to using the road, for the largest percentage of the time, what a nice chap he is. You make your own luck in this respect. I always remember years ago, I did a, an advanced assessment with a chap. No organisation names or anything at all. But anyway, went out for a little run round and he said to me, yeah, you know, nice bit of riding, good, good. He said, um, but you'll, f you'll find I'm a lot quicker and a lot smoother than you. I said, okay. He said, yeah, watch my demonstration. So off we went. And yeah, he was right. He was quicker than me. And he was smoother than me. And that's because he was approaching junctions that he couldn't see into and wasn't reducing his speed. In my opinion, by enough. So in other words, had a vehicle overshot the junction or come out carelessly, could he have dealt with the problem? Not in my opinion, no he couldn't. So from my perspective, I'd rather be a little bit slower and maybe not quite as smooth as he would have liked, but I'll preserve my welfare, shall we say. It's like here, I'll go a bit quicker. Easing off at of the junction, can I? Ooh. Okay, so if someone pulled out of there, I'd have probably just connected with them in all fairness, but then that was because I was going a little bit quicker than maybe I should be. 
if I'd have squeezed up and put the ABS on or just brought it into play could I have shaved a couple of three feet off maybe in which case I probably wouldn't have hit something pulling out of there the variables are quite immense really aren't they could I stop now if an arctic came around that bend yep or stop if a vehicle pulled out in front of me yeah absolutely right I could I think that's what it's all about Okay, so let's have a look at some of these slightly quicker bends then. Can I stop in the distance I can see to be clear? So I'm going to pick a point. Brake. Yep, I can. So we're going to go into a, a 40 limit now. Junction and a sharp right hand bend. What if the car in front cut across? Yep. I can stop. Can't see anything around the corner. Let's pick a point just beyond that chevron. In fact, it's just opening up now, isn't it? Could I stop if there's an obstruction in the road? Yeah. Oh, I'm not coming to a complete stop. I could complete that. I've done the hard part of the braking. So I'm not too concerned about that. Could I stop here? Ooh, that's going to hurt if he comes off, isn't it? Oh, that will hurt. I oh, know it's a nice day. But losing a large quantity of your skin on the tarmac and suffering from clinical shock is probably not the best way to finish a motorcycling day. I mean, it is always interesting to get opinions of different riders and, you know, you're always going to get different opinions. You're going to get as many opinions as you like. One thing you can't argue with is physics. I think we have to be very careful when we move into advanced, in inverted commas, motorcycling. That we don't start thinking that we can escape fact. You know, I think we all think we're, we're much better riders because we've done an advanced course and we know this and we know that and we're much more skilled at this and skilled at that. I think sometimes, especially one thing I was always told when in the police was the big risk area is when you've been on your driving course and you go back and you start driving or riding on your own. That's when you're more likely to have an accident because you've had a well-supervised course with really good instructors. You've been getting out there, you've really been cracking on with it. And then the day comes when there is no one there to say, slow down, ease off, brake, look through that gap. It's down to you. Now, if you get that wrong, being newly qualified, you're in trouble. Could I stop? Yeah, I could, I could. If you don't know as much as you think you know and then it all goes pear-shaped you're going to get punished and that's not advanced riding in my book because a big part of advanced riding is knowing your limitations always riding within them so we're all different you've got to be honest just because your mate can go around a bend at 60 mile an hour doesn't mean you can and if you think that 60 mile an hour around that bend is the absolute maximum then you should be cutting around with at least 10% missing, if not more, 20%. Go around at 50, 48, whatever. Don't take it to the max. That's what advanced motorcycling is all about. It's not about being a riding god, it's about being bloody sensible and not pushing things to the limit. You see, as I probably said in my Benz video, it's quite one thing just blindly following that limit point and having a lovely smooth ride and bringing that speed up. But it's not just about that, is it? It's 
it's like this bend here. Now, what if there's a lorry parked around that bend? Can I stop by the end of that white line? Yep, there we are. Absolutely right, I can. It's not a racetrack, is it, where no one's coming towards you, no one's thrown any rubbish on the road, no one's just broken down around a blind bend. It's one thing achieving the perfect flowing line with everything, the apex all correctly hit and the power put on at the correct time with maximum lean angle and everything. That's lovely on a track, that is. Of course it is. It doesn't work out here. It's a different environment. I think one of the problems with stopping distances is that you have to drive or ride quite a lot until you start to actually get used to what a stopping distance is all about. I mean, I can see my roads clear, but I don't know that someone's not going to pull out of that junction. And so in that respect, yeah, if they did make the road suddenly unclear, I couldn't stop in the distance, I could see to be clear. Of course I couldn't. still take it into account and reduce a little bit of speed of course as you've probably seen in my junction video so even going through that road there national speed limit I never felt once that I was in a situation where I really couldn't stop safely in the distance I could see to be clear as I say, the only exception is like this junction here, this crossroads. If someone was to pull across in front of me, could I stop? I can certainly get rid of a lot of speed. I don't think I could completely stop, maybe. It's like anything, isn't it? There's always going to be exceptions to that rule. There's always going to be some form of variation. Nothing ever is 100%. But of course it's a good topic to discuss and to think about. And so that's the whole purpose of my the video. It's a discussion point really. It's something to think about. At the end of the day, what you don't want to see when you come around a bend at whatever mile hour you're doing is an obstruction completely in your carriageway and the oncoming carriageway has got traffic coming towards you. Because you'll wish you'd have followed the rule a bit more closely at that point. What's your option? Slam into the back of a part of vehicle or hit an oncoming vehicle? There's your two choices. Neither is particularly appealing. So I've had a brief look at this so-called golden rule. I'm still going to stand by it. I can't do really scientific tests with the means at my disposal. But on the face of it, we certainly seem to be heading in the right direction. And I'd suggest that if you are really having trouble stopping in the distance you can see to be safe, clear, whatever word you want to use, you may need to consider your speed that you're using for hazards. But ultimately it's a choice for you to make. It's not for me to dictate to anybody. But all I can say is enjoy your riding, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.